it, it is going to get bigger. So that's great. I want to introduce the panelists, and there are also a few special guests in the audience. Um, to begin with, we have uh, Dr. Michael Geist, uh, who's a law professor at the University of Ottawa. Many of you have known him or heard him or read his stuff. He's got a wonderful blog, and he has got some amazing um, editorials and articles. He's a syndicated columnist in The Citizen and, uh, and also in the Toronto Star, actually. Uh, BBC as well. Um, he's written a lot of articles and government reports on the internet and law, and he was a member of Canada's National Task Force on Spam. Um, Dr. Geist is the editor of The Public Interest, The Future of Canadian Copyright Law, published in 2005, the editor of several monthly technology law publications, and the author of a popular blog on the internet, which many of you often go to, I'm sure, and intellectual property law issues, and as I've often heard said at some of these meetings, Dr. Geist never sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> our, our second speaker will be uh, Charlie Angus. He couldn't sleep for producing that much stuff. Charlie Angus um, is, uh, was elected member of pa parliament for Timmins James Bay, Bay in 2004 and re-elected in 2006. He has worked as a writer, broadcaster, and musician. He is a member of the Juno-nominated band Grievous Angels. Is, are you play Juno? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Charlie has been honored for outstanding contribution to Northern culture at the 1999 Festival Boreal in Sudbury, and he's been a regular contributor to CBC, TVO, and national newspapers, and as you've just heard, he's also introduced a private members bill on these topics. Uh, Rocky Goudreau, our third speaker, is the CEO of Tech Savvy Solutions Incorporated, based in Chatham, Ontario. So you come from Chatham, right? Um, Rocky long has no very long walk. Oh, long walk. Okay. <laughs> Rocky has achieved a considerable reputation for his stance on the importance of the open internet and for taking on the biggest telecom characters in the country on telecom policy issues, and that takes quite a bit of nerve. In May 2008, Rocky even went so far as to bus most of his employees to Parliament Hill to rally for net neutrality. I think some of you people were probably there at that rally too. Great. We also have a few uh, special guests in the audience. If I can find my people here. Um, and I invite them to speak up whenever a topic comes up that they want to intervene in, or I may recognize you at some point. We have Jacob Glick, um, the Canada Policy Council of Google Canada. Is he here? I, I, okay. <laughs> um, we have Mike Gifford, founder of Open Concept Consulting. We have Leslie Regan Shade, communications professor at Concordia University. Graham Cox, Canadian Federation of Students. And um, David Fewer, Canadian Internet Policy and Public Interest Clinic. <coughs> okay. Okay, so I'm going to invite, um, I'm going to invite Dr. Geist um, to come up to the podium. And um, how many people have heard the, um, Heard the uh, little talk he gave on all in a day today. Anybody? Oh, terrific. Okay. So you'll know that he's got an awful lot of um, important information to share with all of us on these issues. Okay. Well, thanks. Can you hear in the back? All right. Sort of. Talk louder. Okay, I'm going to talk, and hopefully people can hear. So I want to thank uh, the organizers behind uh, Save Our Net the, for organizing this and for the invitation. It's really it's a great opportunity to come and speak. And I'm thankful to all of you as well for coming out. I think the fact that there's this many people coming out on a Wednesday night to spend a couple of hours talking about net neutrality uh, says a lot about how far this issue has come and how, and how I think it's going to really emerge large on, on the political scene in the, in the months ahead. Um, so I appeared before a Senate committee a couple of weeks ago, the Senate Transport and Communications Committee, uh, and they gave me like 90 minutes, they gave me a long time, it was, it was actually a fun appearance, and I spoke about sort of three issues that I thought were interconnected, I still think they're interconnected, uh, broadband access, the state of wireless in Canada, and net neutrality. And we had the chance to get into what has been the declining ranking in, in Canada with respect to broadband, the concerns around the lack of access still 
for too many Canadians, the lack of competition associated with the wireless industry, and then the issue of net neutrality, which sits nicely there, both from a wireless and a, a wired perspective. And the senators are just getting up to speed, or these senators, we're just getting up to speed on this issue, though I think their instincts on this are, are right on. They actually had traveled to Europe the week before that I appeared uh, to get a sense and a comparison between Canada and I think it was France and, and Britain on the state of their internet infrastructure. And I think they had already come back in some ways convinced that we have a lot of work to do here in Canada. But the one thing that struck me about the kinds of questions that I got asked on a pretty repeated basis from the senators was in a sense they asked the same question that apparently appears as the very last question on this handout, which is what do we do? So I think that they appreciated that there are problems in this area and their concern was, well, what can we do? And I think, in fact, whether by design or inadvertently, we've got a panel that's dedicated or going to focus on what we can do. So Charlie, I'm sure, will talk a bit about his private member's bill, which is one thing that we could do. And Rocky can talk a bit about his fight uh, at the CRTC, which is, of course, another thing that we can do or that can be done. And I want to spend just a couple of minutes talking about a couple of other things that I think can be done. And my focus here is actually to, and I mentioned it I think on the CBC this afternoon, to focus on what I think of as the low-hanging fruit. So there are issues that are unquestionably controversial and difficult to deal with. And I don't know that anybody, anybody has the exact answer about how to deal with them, much less how to put it into legislation to, make it a, to, to deal with all the kinds of concerns that come up. But I think that there are, within this broader rubric of net neutrality, a number of points <laughs> of which just about everybody across the spectrum ought to be able to agree on, and that we ought to ensure is enshrined either today in law or if it isn't, will be enshrined into law. Now, as a starting point, the first, of course, would be no content blocking at all. Now, of course, my friends, our friends over in the telecom companies will tell us, well, the law already says that. Uh, but we know that there is at least one high-profile incident, and they hate when you bring it up, uh, in which TELUS blocked access to uh, one site in particular, but in the process blocked access to about 600 websites. And they did it for just a couple of days until they were able to obtain a court order uh, in which they ordered these, the, the one website that they had a particular problem with, it was during a strike action, to remove certain amounts of content. Um, and so they say it was one time, we've never done it again, we never would do it again, and the argument is that the law applies. Well, I was in Banff on the weekend in which I engaged in a TELUS-sponsored debate with TELUS, um, and this issue came up, and the, one of the responses from a TELUS executive was that they described their uh, blocking as incompetent because they blocked these hundreds of other sites. So I said, okay, so you're incompetent and you uh, block these sites. Uh, and my question for TELUS, for which I never got an answer and for which I, I never recall hearing an answer from them at all, was do if, in fact, it's their position that Canadian law addresses this issue, do they acknowledge that they broke the law? And I have never heard TELUS say definitively that yes, we violated Canadian law when we did it. Uh, and from my perspective, that I, either the law addresses this issue, in which case they broke the law and are apparently incompetent, uh, or Canadian law doesn't address the issue, in which case they didn't violate the law and we've got a clear problem with respect to Canadian law and the way in which it's enforced. And so surely we ought to be able to agree that content ought not to be blocked. And we've got one incident that I think we still today, years later, need clarification on as to whether or not this was a violation of the law or not. I think we behoove tell us to step up and discuss. The second issue surrounds the question of transparency. Now, you hear often that consumers ought to be able to make, that, that telcos ought to be able to engage in the kinds of practices they want to engage in. And if a consumer doesn't like it, they can always go elsewhere. And yet it seems to me that one of the fundamental problems behind that basic premise is that consumers don't know what it is that they're buying. And sometimes they are being told that they are buying one thing when in fact they are provided with something else entirely.